The founder of the Indian Vaisheshika school was a person by the name of Canada. We know very little about them besides their name, which was probably apocryphal as it translates to Atom Eater, an appropriate name for the founder of a naturalistic system of philosophy based upon atomism. It is believed that they lived sometime between the 6th and 2nd century BCE, probably after the founding of the Ajivaka sect, from which aspects of their philosophy appears to derive. The Vaisheshika sect divided reality into six categories, although a seventh was later added. The first three of these categories, the trinity of physical reality, were matter, qualities, and motion. The second trio is the trinity of perceived reality, being universal, particular, and inherence. The seventh category, which was added by later Vaisheshika thinkers, was that of non-being. For Canada, matter was both the first category and the primal substance, the substrata from which qualities and motion derive their existence. In Vaisheshika physics, matter was created from nine separate substances. The first four of these substances were earth, water, fire, and air. They were seen as created from atomistic particles which made up the physical universe. The next three elements were ether, space, and time. All three of these elements were seen as all-pervading, eternal, and singular, as in not divided and atomistic like physical matter. Ether was seen as providing the medium by which these other physical elements interacted, combined, and created the multitude of physical phenomena that we encounter day to day. Time was posited as the cause of our perception of past, present, and future, while space is similarly deduced as the cause of our perceptions of relative locations, such as near, far, here, and there. The next two categories of matter were the soul and the mind, which compositely created the self. The soul is largely taken from the earlier Brahmanic tradition, and is seen as eternal, all-pervading spirit, which provides the substratum for the quality of consciousness, and it is where emotions and feelings occur. Minds were seen as multiple and atomic, and they were seen as providing the conduit through which the self, arising in the soul, perceives the physical world, and interacts with it. The mind interacts with the senses, which arise from the combination of atomic matter, which generates the body. Besides matter, the other two aspects of the trinity of physical reality were quality and motion. The Vaisheshika school described both of these categories as being unable to exist independently from matter. However, Canada divided them from matter because in the action of perception they could be named, identified and conceived of separately to the matter on which they depended for existence. The Vaisheshika saw reality as not only combined from these physical trinity, but also from the perceived aspects of reality. The first aspect of the second trinity was generality, the universal characteristic which united all individual cases in a class. This generality existed in both a greater sense, as in that all objects are part of the unified one of the universe, but also in the lesser, as in the unifying link between differing members of a genus. The second aspect of this trinity of perception is particularity. This is the individual uniqueness, which is how we perceive the difference between different objects. This isn't the difference in compound objects, which is derived from the differences in their parts, but rather the unique difference between the partless ultimate substances, the nine forms of matter. The final aspect of perceived reality is inherence. This is defined in different ways, including as the relationship between cause and effect, the contained in the container, and the part in the whole. I think most clearly it can be thought of as the relationship that exists between the general and the particular. Later Vaisheshika thinkers expanded on these first six categories, including a seventh being non-existence. It was unique in that unlike the other six categories, it was negative. It appears that non-existence was created to solve logical problems that arose from the Vaisheshika metaphysics, such as what happened to an object prior to its creation, after its destruction, and to eliminate tautological statements. Vaisheshika would go on to be one of the important six schools of orthodox Hindu philosophy. Although Canada did not mention God, gods, or the divine, 
Later commentators saw it as compatible with the earlier teachings of the Vedas and incorporated it into the mainstream. The Vaisheshika saw ignorance as keeping the soul in bondage to matter, and through knowledge was the idea that we could achieve liberation. Upon liberation, the individual soul, freed from the fetters of the body and mind, would no longer be returned to the physical world. Interestingly, this idea of liberation doesn't include a subsuming into the underlying unity of the soul, but rather would include the soul retaining its individuality, but existing in nothingness, doing, feeling, and thinking nothing. The Vaisheshika school was eventually absorbed into the later Nyaya school of logicians, who built upon a sophisticated system of logic on top of the metaphysics of Canada and his school. Although decreasing with importance after the medieval period, the Vaisheshika influenced not only Hindu, but also broader Indian metaphysics throughout history. 